Before I go through the test, please bear with me for just a short minute while I go through a few caveats. Before I begin, please remember to read the description below for corrections or updates. Road equipment is fine. Not arguing that it isn't good, I buy it myself. My argument is that Rode is making fraudulent marketing claims, which will eventually hurt their brand name more than it will you or I. Science matters. Analog will always rule. There are many things digital processes cannot do, like create the natural colors or sounds that weren't recorded in the first place. Therefore, I worry Rode is dumbing down podcasters and filmmakers. Learn and respect analog science. Again, road equipment is fine. Clipping is not a real life problem anyway. Real life problems are noise, echo, wind, rustling, poor mic placement, electrical interference, bad memory cards, and human error, etc., etc. If you don't want clipping, then use either A, automatic gain control, or AGC, been around forever. It will try and raise and lower the gain as it processes sound in real time. I'm pretty sure Rode has this built into all their consumer equipment. Or run two microphones, one set at low gain, the other at high. 32-bit float, I don't know why I wrote flat, can have benefits. There are situations where 32-bit will improve one's safety in recording usable data, but it no more fixes audio than 24-bit fixed 16-bit or 16-bit fixed 8-bit, okay? <laughs> But again, not saying to use it, I probably will use it myself. Okay, I'm gonna test the Rode NTG1 boom mic in this Tascam 32-bit recorder. And I have the input gain set on high and everything on high because, again, their claim is it doesn't make a difference what you set on, you're not gonna get distortion. So let's just see if we get any distortion in, in, the, um, in the mic. And so this is recording in both 24-bit um, and 32-bit. And as you can see, you know, it looks okay at the moment, but I'm gonna speak really loudly in it. And the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plane. All right, here's the recording with the NTG1 uh, with the gain set high. And this is a 24 bit. So if we play this, and as you can see, you know, it looks okay at the moment. But I'm gonna speak really loudly. So you can obviously hear it's clipping. And if we try and bring it down a bit, it's not really going to make a difference at the moment. But I'm going to speak it doesn't make a difference at all. Okay, now we'll go to 32 bit. And yeah, it looks really good. But looks are deceiving. So let's just listen to it. 24 bit and 32 bit. And as you can see, you know, it looks okay at the moment. But I'm going to speak really loudly in it. And so that doesn't sound bad, right? But it's low. So it's not really going to use it that low. So let's just say, let's just bring it up to where. It's a volume we'll actually use it to match the other one. It looks okay at the moment, but I'm gonna speak really loudly in it and the rain in Spain falls. So, <laughs> I mean, to me, it's it's it's, it's the same clipping. It, it looks in the waveform, uh, you know, when you operate in one of these things, it looks fine. So that's why you see people on the internet, they'll show these things, but they don't play them as you would in real life because you can actually expand it in, uh, and really try and use it at, the, at, a pro, at a decent volume, it's gonna sound clipped to this again. Moment, but I'm gonna speak really loudly in it and the rain in Spain falls. Right. All right, so that's the NTG1 at maximum gain. The 32-bit float did not protect it from clipping. Okay, well, I'm out here walking around with the Tascam Porta Capture and uh, this little lab mic I bought for $9 on Amazon. <laughs> I love. Uh, you know, normally I just put this down my shirt, but I'm gonna leave it like this. So right now I have an external mic and I've put the gain up all the way. So you can see it's going red. But you know, the problem with the 32-bit from these manufacturers is you don't have to worry about the gain. So we're gonna assume, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing or whatever, the gain is up high because I think it's fine. And so the question will, will this, will it make a difference uh, in 32-bit? So I'm gonna hit record, okay. So I've hit record, it's now recording, though it's showing me that I'm, I'm uh, uh, clipping right now. But again, if I'm a dummy, I don't know any difference. And it's recording, it's interesting, this has both, it has 20, it'll save to both 24-bit and 32-bit float. I'm sort of curious which it saves to first. Uh, <laughs> or does this split the analog screen up? It probably does that. And uh, anyway, so I'm talking, uh, I think it should be distorted in the 24-bit at the moment, 
Um, but the 32 bit should be able to close down. But now, now I'm going to speak right into the mic here. And now it's like solid red. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. So will it be able to capture that back? I don't know. We're now going to look at the lavalier I did outside. This is a 24 bit. And uh, I'm sure it's going to sound like it's clipping. Dual recording. I'm not going to move the mic from my shirt. And I'm going to speak right into it, and it's going red. So I guess it's um, it's obviously clipping. Bring it down a teeny bit. It's going to be the same. And I'm going to speak right into it, and it's going red. And now let's go to the 32-bit file. And we bring it down. Yeah, but even in the we can see here clipping. So this is a visual proof that 32-bit float does not prevent clipping in a dynamic lavalier microphone. Uh, but let's just bring this up all the way. Well, it's going to be low, probably too low here. And I'm going to speak right into it, and it's going red. So that wasn't as loud as the other one. So to make the one as loud as the other one. And I'm going to speak right into it, and it's going red. So I guess it's... um. So once again, the 32-bit float, even actually on the scope here, we can see the clipping. And uh, listening to it, I don't hear really much less clipping in it than I did on the 24-bit. So 32-bit float uh, did not protect me from clipping with my lavalier mic. Now I'm using a dynamic mic. I have it on high gain again. Because again, according to 32-bit road, this 32-bit float, I won't get this you know, um, clipping. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. So there shouldn't be any clipping there, right? The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. <laughs> okay. Now this was interesting. Here I'm using the dynamic ball mic. And this is 24-bit. And let's just play from here. The rain in Spain falls mainly... And I'm going to bring down the... Uh, Bring it down a little bit lower, play it again. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plane. And now, okay, so now I'm going to go to the 32-bit um, uh, float. I'm going to bring it up to what would be a reasonable volume to match the other. The rain in Spain falls mainly. And I think that sounds much better. I don't think it sounds as distorted. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plane. I mean, it's still distorted. But it doesn't sound as bad as the 24 bit. So I want you to feel unfair. The rain in Spain falls. So I think I think that's better. It's, uh, the 32 bit helped. The rain in Spain falls. And I don't expect it to help in the dynamic microphone. Um, I expect it to be worse. So I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I do I do feel it, it's it helped here. It didn't remove the, the clipping, but it made it sound a little bit better. Okay, I know what many of you are thinking. <laughs> Only a dummy would do what I just did in many of these videos and set the gain to the highest and whatever. So, but my point is that Rode essentially sort of co-opted the whole idea of 3 bit float and saying that it prevents clipping. And um, I just feel that's spreading false information. Um, I think we all know it's consumer equipment. Uh, what's probably going to save the clipping in most cases will be that they have automatic gain control enabled as a default. You can probably go in and set it manually if you know what you're doing. But that's really what irks me about this is it's not a, you know, look at science is taking centuries to develop. Uh, and um, we want to sort of understand, we want to, you know, all sort of understand, we want to stand on the shoulders of giants. And we don't want to just make these claims that to me are against the facts of of analog equipment. Like, uh, you know, since I came from a generation before 2000 and I worked with analog equipment, I sort of understand it more, but many young people today do not. They've lived their whole life in digital. They think everything is digital. They don't understand that everything originates in, in analog and it has some rules. And mother nature, doesn't care what you think, what you think you can do with, with, with digital processing. Analog follows certain laws of physics. And to me, Rode is basically saying, oh, we've 
we've made an end run around that that those laws of physics and by using this new digital 32-bit float, float format we can prevent clipping and that just gets my blood boiling so i hope you understand and again i'm not dissing Rhodes equipment um, i just want you to, to understand if you want to really get into this in my opinion you should not believe that 32-bit float is going to create uh, allow you to record better audio thanks for watching